Hello and welcome to Metro AV Tech Tips. It's not solutions today, but that's Friday. But welcome to Metro AV Tech Tips. As you can see, I'm once again standing here by myself. I shouldn't be. Wait, he's here. Yeah, I am here. He's here. I Darn am it. here. Move over. Move over. I'm back. <laughs> so stuff should actually work uh, it should, now. It should work now. No, you guys did great. Uh, <laughs> it was, it's easy uh, for you to say that. <laughs> now that it's after the fact, right? Uh, no, it, it, was, uh, it, it was great being the person on the other side of the screen watching the video rather than so you know, you left putting on the videos. Oh, up yeah, 100% I did. Yeah, 100%. Um, but I really appreciate you guys and Jeff Picaccio coming in and, and kind of, you know, stepping in and, and well, being and the and person. Well, and to be honest with you, with, without Brandon here to help on the back end to run this thing, it would have been a complete disaster from my point. Understood. I'm I'm decent at standing here, but running this thing? Yeah. No. Nope, nope, not happening. Now, you, you do you do okay when it comes to making sure that you've got the, the top camera and, and the front camera and, sure, we'll, you know, we'll whatever say, else, right? We'll say okay on that. <laughs> yeah, no. You make it. Wait, anyways. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, we've got, you know, Brent. Uh, you are Brent. I am Adam. I've got Brandon over here producing and running the show. Uh, and so and I checking think, uh, your uh, YouTube stuff and letting us know if we... Have to. Yeah. I don't. You don't have a laptop today. I don't have a laptop. I, I have my phone. I, I am on the chat, so you know. Do you want to put take your stuff the in there. Uh, iPad for that? I oh, know you got it. Okay. You, got it. you need a job. You know. I mean, it's not. I'm like pretty. You, you don't do anything. My job around. is pretty. Vanna, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Purdy. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, do the Facebook thing. <laughs> do the, like, share, subscribe. Uh, hit that little bell notification to let you know whenever we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. You can find us on our other social media uh, locations: uh, Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Instagram. Are we on Twitter? I think we are on Twitter. Aren't we're we? on Twitter and Instagram. Yep. Instagram uh, on Instagram. Hit us up uh, at at AV Tech Tips uh, is our uh, Instagram. We also have the Metro AV Instagram, so you can check out that as well. Um, but the at AV Tech Tips is a really good way for you to get in touch with us directly. Uh, send us pictures of your install. Send Please. us questions. Uh, we love seeing all that kind of stuff. Hashtag uh, AV Tech Tips uh, or hashtag Metro AV, uh, so that we can see all the stuff that's going on with that. We do monitor those as well. We and also as, like to get some ideas of what you guys would like to see. Yeah, um, and as always, while you're here watching the, the show today, leave us a comment over in the chat section over on this side, uh, or if you're watching this after the fact, leave it down in the, in the section below in the comment sections. We do go back and monitor those. Uh, at least now that I'm back uh, at the office, we monitor those. So so where did you go? I, well, first off, I was in Texas. I uh, did a training there with uh, with our one of our or actually two of our three of, three our, sales of our sales reps. Sales yeah, staff. three of our sales reps. We had uh, Jason Lundell, we had John Kennedy, and we had Mickey Earl there. Uh, and we did a training over there with uh, HDMI bandwidth, which is why we're doing next week is on HDMI bandwidth. Yeah, you're breaking my heart because I'm not going to be here. You're not going to be here. So I was gone for two weeks, and you're gone next week. So and then after I'm that, gone for two weeks. Are you gone for two weeks? Yeah. Are you now? You're only missing one episode though, right? That's right. Yes, that's yes. what it is. Okay, I'm going to Key West, but I'll be back for the for, right. the for the second episode. So then I went to West Virginia and visited some family. Uh, we all kind of converged on a cabin there in West Virginia. It was great; had a wonderful time. Uh, and uh, but God, you know the jokes that are flying in my head I, that I, I can't I, say. I, I know. Be nice. Uh, Leo, Leo says uh, we laugh no matter what side of the camera you're on. <laughs> well, yes. Basically, I think he's just saying they laugh at you. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. What do we got this week? Well, a couple of housekeeping things before we get too far into the actual show. Uh, I don't first, have to sweep, do I? No, you don't. So first and foremost, uh, Cedia is happening. Um, it's real. It's real. It's actually happening. It's in person. We're not doing any of the, that weird, like, virtual, you know, whatever yeah, stuff that's going on time. with it. We are actually happening. It's in Indianapolis, of course. We are at, our booth number is 4200. So 4200 is We're at our the front of the number. hall. We're at the right front by of the Crestron. Hall, right by Crestron. We are we're if you see the big Crestron, the you know, big blue, if we're you see big left. blue, we're just to the left of, of uh, Crestron. So and come check us out. We're gonna have full staff there. Yep. So come in, meet all of our sales guys. Yep. You're gonna have I mean everybody's gonna be there this yep. year. I think maybe like one or two people are staying here to monitor the phones. No, we left Brandon. Oh, okay. Lewis. Will? Uh, I think Will's going. I think, uh, I think, well, I'm, I'm thinking of the sales staff. Are we taking literally everybody? I think we're taking everybody. Well, okay. That'll be a first for quite a while, actually, in fact. It's my understanding, everybody, but huh? we're at the bottom of the information well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, love to talk about the system design with extenders. Nick, yes, um, that's actually a really good idea. Uh, Nick is saying he would love to talk about system design with extenders. Well, you know, we um, did one. I think one. we had one a while ago. We did ago. one, but mm -hmm. it's been, it was pre-COVID. That was, yeah, at it least, It was pre-COVID. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that was studio. 
I was in the studio, that's right. So yes, that's a great one yep. because a lot of things have changed things in the changed. time of COVID. Yep, we've had, we've had a, a really great extender come out since then. Um, that's and you know, some my favorite. new products going with that extender and coming out. And some other stuff that that maybe here in the future we're going to be able to talk yeah. more about. So, so we'll definitely, that's a good idea. That is a great idea. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Leo says he'll be there. Uh, um, yeah, let Austin. us know if you're coming. <laughs> let Austin. He's saying leave Austin here to man the phones. I'm right there with you. Leo, uh, I got Austin up in New York next week, so that'd be intriguing. Cramming all of Austin into a subcompact car. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Okay, so. Why don't we get into what today's show is actually and about? And today's show is... I hit the button, see if I can get this to work right. Uh, today's show is about Ohm's Law. Resistance is futile. See, you're not even old enough to know what that means. Well, of course I know what that means. I may not be, have been old enough to be, have been there, but that doesn't mean I, I haven't partaken. Partaken? Yeah, partaken. I, partake, partook, in the repeats. In the repeats. In, in, in the, the reruns. On the, uh, the reruns of it. So we're talking about Ohm's Law. Now, we've actually talked about this once before, and I wanted to talk about it again because I felt like there needed to be more information. And I've kind of changed the way that I do my trainings and teachings and stuff because it's no longer about necessarily the top layer of things. I like to get a little bit more into the meat of what's happening. So, of course, with Ohm's Law specifically... You say this about being on a keto diet. Understood, yes, yes, uh, which may not be on purpose anyways. Uh, it's subconscious, right? So anyway, so with when in our world, Ohm's law is really important when it comes to speakers. We use it all the time when it comes to how many speakers are on this system, how many speakers can I put in here? Is it you know acting funny? You know, why well, is the it's not just quiet? there. In, in HDMI circuit board design, yeah, Ohm's law impedance control is very very important. Yeah, exactly. So it so today what I wanted to do was talk about Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law exactly? You know, what, what, how does it work for one? Um, I also want to do the math. I want to go ahead and show how the math actually works for that. Uh, and then I want to get into troubleshooting using Ohm's law uh, in your speaker systems. And we can even talk about how it works with HDMI. You can help out with that. Okay. See, I gave you a job, right? Uh, I feel so much more I'm sure you purposeful do. <laughs> now. <laughs> All right. So. Now that we Basically, have that. you're just going to kick me out of the frame, and I'm going to sit over there, and you're going to work, aren't you? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about That's right. That's what I thought. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, so the first part of today's episode, we're going to talk about what is Ohm's Law. So I have four pages worth of notes here to go over. If you go into the description down below, you can actually find those notes as a download. There's a link right down there. Uh, feel free to either download it and look at it later on if you want to, or you can follow along with today, or however you want to do that. And the link of where we got this information? All of that is referenced inside of that, that document. So feel free to take a look at that and take a look at those websites as well. There's also a YouTube video on there from, not Practical Engineering, some other uh, uh, person in there, but he's linked in there as well. Check out his video, because he goes into really uh, a little bit more in depth than I'm going to, um, but we'll talk about that, that at that time. Okay? Okay, so. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Brent, a little bit of history for Ohm's Law. Okay. Okay. All right. When now, was, uh, don't ask me this question. I'm, I'm going to ask it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask it. Brent, when was Ohm, Ohm's Law found? Okay, I'm not going to look at the paper. Uh -huh. I'm going to take a step. You, actually, you don't even have that information on your paper. Oh, yeah. wow. You can't even cheat. Easier. Yep. I'm going to take a stab at this. I'm going to okay. take a stab at this. 1627. Too old. Really? Okay. Yep. Uh, it was found in on January 8th of 1826 by a gentleman, George, uh, well, I'm going to... William Ohms? Nope. Uh, George Simon Ohm was his name. <laughs> now, I probably mis mispronounced that because there's no E on the end of it. He was a German fellow. Um, and uh, in 1826, he found it, and it was finally published in May of 1827 through whatever he, he created papers. it. He didn't find it. He found it because technically, when there's a law, they find the law, they discover the laws, they get to name it because they found it. But when you have a theory, you you come up with a theory. When you find, when you discover a law, that's different because that's just the law. So of he's nature. just walking along and tripped over a law. I mean, Eureka. Okay, we'll you, go with Eureka. Right? I mean, that's the, essentially that's, a, that's what's happening, right? You just kind of we'll find it and, and it the, works, right? The apple hit him on top of the head, yeah. and he had a revelation about gravity and ohms. Yeah. All right, Brent, give me a top-down shot. Let's go ahead and draw, I can some, do that. draw some stuff on, on the whiteboard. So I have my cheat sheet here. I'm going to show you what's going on with that. So Ohm's Law, pretty straightforward stuff. The main thing that we need to know is that we have voltage uh, equals current. Brent, why? 
You know, I asked you that question earlier because <laughs> I'm looking at that. It's like, why is there an I there? So we have. We're gonna we're gonna blame the French on that one. Yep. So we have voltage, we have current. Now, okay. You told me earlier, yep. can you say it again? Because uh, nope. you had a hard time with this. <laughs> nope, I cannot say it. It is French. Uh, the reason we use the I is because it's, uh, uh, uh-oh. Come on. Uh-oh. What did I say it was? It was, uh, um, oh, shoot. <laughs> and I've completely forgotten what it is. I should have written this one down. But essentially, what? It, let's see if anybody's helping me out here. Is my analog multimeter still relevant? Yes, yes, John, it is. And we'll get to that. Uh, and uh, the experts are saying nobody made gravity. That's right. It was discovered. Gravity wasn't invented. It was discovered, right? I mean, granted, everyone knows gravity because you, you... But what about the mathematical equations to support gravity? Again, uh, the laws I, think, of gravity. I think those are discovered rather than, than created. Um, okay, so but the I is actually French for for flow of current. Yeah, flow of current, or or the, the 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 power of current. That's where the I comes from. Is the French for the 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 push of current. Then of course we have the R, which stands for resistance. Okay, which was also French frequently. The resistance. Resistance. Yeah, sure. Okay, um, you're going to get us in trouble one of these days. Uh, okay, so this is just one part of the equation. There's actually three equations inside of Ohm's law. Um, this is how we find out the voltage based on the current and the resistance. We can also find out the current based on the voltage divided by the resistance. And of course, we can also find out the resistance based on the voltage divided by the current. So as long as we have two, we can find the third regardless. Exactly. Yeah, that's the whole idea. You can, so long as you have at, le at least one of those or two of those three, you can find out what the third Which one makes is. Which makes us a very elegant equation. Oh, it's great. Yeah. And, and what these do here, so this is this is probably the primary uh, equation here. And what these do is these just ratify that that equation. You can verify, ratify, rat, uh, verify this equation based on these. So if, the, if everything equals the same with all of them, because you're working your way backwards. So it's checksums. It's checksums. Yeah, exactly. So now here's the thing. There's a really easy way to remember these three equations because let's be perfectly honest, I don't remember all of these together because you that's can't just- remember the I that you told me earlier. Yeah, exactly. Well, no, I did remember the I, exactly. So the re what we do instead is we use Ohm's triangle. So we just draw ourselves a nice little equilateral triangle here. We put a line across and a line down like that. Our voltage goes up here like so. Our current goes here. And then of course our resistance goes here. So the way that this works is we can, now I'm going somewhere with this. So follow along, you're gonna, you're gonna understand where I'm going with this here in a little bit. Um, so let's say for instance, I wanna find out what our current is. So all I have to do is I just cover up our current like so. Now I have the equation, voltage divided by resistance, right? But let's say I wanna find out what the voltage is. So I cover that up there and I say it's my current times my resistance, right? And that's how this comes here. So it, what whatever- What if you wanna know the resistance? Well, then you cover that up and you say voltage divided by current, right? So why is that important? That's where the next part of this comes in because the way that this works out, um, let's see, let me go ahead and go here. Where did I write out an actual equation? That's what happens when you have too many notes. <laughs> so let's say here, let's say the output of our amplifier, okay? And I'm gonna use a random voltage because it varies depending on the volume of the, of the, the source that's coming out of it for going to the speakers, right? So I'm just gonna say, let's say we, are, we have 10 volts to work with. That's a very powerful output. Okay, so then let's say my resistance in ohms is four ohms, okay? Okay. So I wanna find out what kind of current we're doing, our wattage. Right? I want to find out what kind of wattage we have going through there. So I'm going to take my voltage. Let's see. Da, da, da. Dun, dun, dun. Erase this over here. Now that we have our triangle, we're going to take our 10 volts. We're going to divide that by 4. And what we're going to wind up with is 0.4 watts. Right? So now the neat thing about this is that we can actually use this to find out what our... I think it's 40. Is it 40? It's 10, is it 10 divided by four or 10 over four? It's 10 over four. So that's 40. No, it's, it's divided by. Okay. Yeah, because that's, that's what this is. It's, it, it's, it's divided by. Okay. That's where that is there. Okay. Uh, find out the current, there it is. Okay, just making right? sure. 
You're going to make me double check myself on this. Sorry, this is amps. 0.4 amps. Ah, it's a whole different thing than watts. It is. It's a very different thing than watts. I'm looking at 10 volts and 4, 4, 4 ohms. You should have more than... Yes. Yes, you should. 0.4 watts. So what this is telling us here, this Ohm's law works this way for this part of it here. This is the equation for Ohm's law. So we're in a little bit deeper than where most people really need to be when, in, in our industry anyways. It's good to know this information because then you can verify if there's a problem somewhere. You can work your way back all the way to the equation and be like, okay, hold on a second. Something really weird is happening. Let me go all the way back to here and work my way you know, well, it's great for troubleshooting if you want to why your speakers are burning up. Yeah. The 12 volt guys live and die by this. Mm -hmm. Now, Brent, what's the difference between resistance and impedance? You know, you asked me this one earlier. Mm -hmm. And me being not the smartest character in the book. Sure. First thing I ask you is a, uh, is a piston engine AC or DC? Right. Yeah. Uh, it's AC, right? Yeah. So piston engine is AC. Now, now then you ask me what it's a rotary. rotary engine. Now a rotary engine is DC. It represents it's, DC because it's one direction. Right. There's no return path. Now, see, here's what, and then I said, here's what's interesting. A, a, a piston engine is both. No. Because. Because it's high the, low. The rotary portion of it is continuing in, in one direction, right? So is AC. No. AC is well, no it's, AC. It's back and forth, right? back and forth. So right. it's a piston engine. Right. High low. So it's AC powering a DC right. output. It's, it's, it's a rectifier is what it is. Rectifier? Is, is that AC to DC? Well, not, not entirely because you are DC going down the transmission line effectively. Mm -hmm. While it's not DC, the application is. Oh, you're right. Mike, thank you. My math is way off. Thank you. <laughs> 10 divided by 4 is 2.5 amps. Yeah, because 2 is uh, Yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks, that. Thanks, Mike. And if anybody's going to catch it, it it's it going to be Mike. It, it'll be Mike. Okay, so, now, for Ohm's Law, yes. is Ohm's Law only based in AC or DC? And Ohm's Law walks, straddles both lines. Both lines. You know why? We, we talked about this yes, earlier we before did. the show. Do you remember why? No. Okay. But you don't remember the eye either, so I I'm not feeling too bad. Eye. I'm going to look up the eye. You're going to make me... I'm look up, just keep you know, going. Yeah. How does it straddle both lines? <laughs> okay. So the reason that it straddles both lines is because there is no time variable in Ohm's Law. It's a snapshot. It's to say, in this moment, this is the information for Ohm's Law. In this one particular moment, the resistance is this. And why is that important in speakers? So here's what's interesting. When you take a voltmeter and you turn on your voltmeter onto the uh, impedance. Yes. Which is here. Yes. And then you take, let's see, we're going to do a top down shot. And then you take your speaker terminals and you say, okay, well, what kind of resistance or what kind of rating? What's the rating on the speaker? Yeah, what's the rating on the speaker? So we're going to go ahead and pop this in here. We're going to pop that in there. 7.2. Okay. Well. Make that shut up. Stabilized at, at seven. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, now hold it. While we're there, because mm -hmm. we talked about this earlier. So you, you, what are you doing down below? You, you can kind of describe what's happening. I'm moving the driver, which changes the impedance. Okay. And why does that change the impedance? Well, because we're going through a coil. Yes, we right? are. Right, and there's a magnet going through a coil, and what that's doing is that's changing the impedance of it. Now, here's what's in, what's interesting. Let's go ahead and kill that. Make that stop. So, when you are looking at a coil. Because of the way that Ohm's Law works, we're reading based on a DC current. So your multimeter is actually outputting a certain amount of DC voltage uh, through the circuit. The probes. Through the probes in order to verify is there a connection between all of that and it's to read the resistance of that. Now, and you notice I said resistance. In a coil system with an AC design, it's not resistance that you're reading, it's impedance that we're reading. So resistance, what happens is the electrons are going through in a DC circuit, right? And what they're doing is they're going through and they're gonna hit a bunch of different things along the way, right? That's the resistance of it. So the pressure going through there is built up because the voltage is the pressure and that's pushing it through. And the resistance is the fact that the electrons can't get through it freely, right? There's something there that's slowing them there's down. There's a toll booth. There's a toll, well, toll booth, there's pop holes in the road, there's whatever it is, it's slowing it down. They've driven through Holly Hill. Right, yeah, exactly. So, a coil with a magnet acts as a very large pole, right? It's a very large speed bump. Now, when you move that inside of there, you're changing the size of that speed bump, essentially, or the number of things that are in there. 
That was me. So what's happening then with impedance instead, that's AC. There's a lot of math involved with that, which I didn't get into because that's a whole other rabbit hole of electrical engineering that I wasn't ready to get into. But essentially what's happening is, is that instead of those electrons pushing up against something in one single direction, instead, because AC is going back and right. forth, High what's low. happening there is it's, it's actually staying within a certain period of space and going back and forth. And so the impedance of that is maybe those electrons are only hitting certain uh, bits of information in one area, right? Or bits of, of, of something in the way over and over again. So it's a slightly different resistance, a bit resistance versus impedance. It's so, how the meters reads it. Right. Now, how does that affect us in the real world? Well, the way that it affects us here is the fact that when you send a DC current through this signal here, it affects us because you never, when you're reading impedance with the multimeter, you almost never get whatever the nominal impedance is of the speaker, right? It's always a little bit lower than whatever it is. And the reason for that is a little twofold, but mostly it's because you're sending that DC current through that coil, which means that you're pushing that coil, or depending on if you have the, the, uh, right. the pieces Inverted, re reversed, pulling, pulling on it. And what that's doing is that's actually changing the impedance of that coil. Schrodinger's cat. Uh, yeah, just by the, just by the act just of by looking the, at it, uh, just by you're the changing act of it. observation. Yes, you're changing. You're it. changing it exactly. So that's why you run into those problems. Now, how? Kind of an interesting thing. How do you test that? No, you don't. Wait, wait, but how do you test that? Now, is the with, well, wait, wait, let's, let's say, engage. Is, is the impedance protection? I turned it turned on. on. With the impedance protection turned on and on this, you're not going to be checking it. And with that, you're not going to be checking it either. With any kind of accuracy? No, correct. Because of the transformers. Right. You kind of just have to go with... You have to believe the math. Yeah. Um, which is <laughs> why I wanted to show the math for this. So, that brings us to the next part. Now, this is kind of the deep side of it, right? So, I want to kind of bring it back a little bit and let's look at how this works for us. Now, if anybody is from the car audio world, you'll be very familiar with this because most of the car audio stuff, you change out the, uh, the speakers and then you can add extra speakers and that changes the impedance of things. Uh, or in our world, in the uh, custom installation world. Stacking up drivers in a room or right, putting you, multiple speakers on an amp. Yep, or doing distributed audio systems uh, and adding additional speakers to that. Ooh, that which takes us back to our 70 volt episode. Yes, it does. So the 70 volt episode was fun because that's a constant voltage system, meaning that it stays at 70 volts no matter what. That's a, that's a different type of system than an 8 ohm system mm -hmm. normally is, right? And there's a lot of math and maybe we'll get into that uh, as well, which on that episode we had true audio? Yes. We had Jimmy from True Audio. Yep, and man, that was a quite educational episode. Right. Uh, which is caused by inductance. Yes, and we talked about inductance and capacitance earlier. Yes, we did, didn't we? So what does inductance do? It speeds things up. What does capacitance do? It slows things down. Inductance leads, capacitance lags. There you go. What is a capacitor? Uh, it's a it's a roadblock. It's an energy storage device. Yes. It's a battery. Yeah, it's a battery. Okay, so... The next part of this, then, of course, is how do we use this in our every day? Uh, doing series versus parallel speaker systems. Okay, so we've got a restaurant. Yep. We get a large room. We're going to take a single zone off of our amplifier instead of putting, you know, breaking up the room into multiple zones. Sure. Because the restaurant owner is a little on the cheap side. Sure. I bought a decent amp, you know, like a Crown or maybe a Crestron, you know, a nice amp. But it didn't we're, we're certainly the... going to leave out, you know, the 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 other brands that didn't, didn't go for the yeah sure didn't didn't go for the uh yeah, multi zoning yeah, yeah. in the main or, room or, or the 70 volt systems they're going right. they're sticking with the the eight ohm they want hi fi yeah of course right so we're going to put six speakers in the main room okay how are we going to put six ceiling speakers in the main room on a distributed amplifier meant for an eight ohm load for it's meant for an eight ohm loan uh, eight, eight ohm load, load but and, do we know the, and these are eight ohm speakers do we know the range of load that it's cap that the amplifier is capable of holding um, they claim they'll accept a four ohm load, but I would not trust any chip amp to be that stable below the rated primary power. Okay. Unless you have a big giant toroid transformer like in the Parasound over there. Right. Which weighs 88 pounds. Right. I'm not a big fan of pushing my impedance loads. Sure. Okay. So we've got six speakers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make it easy on us and I'm going to say. I could have said four and made it easy on you, but I'm not going to do oh, that. Oh, no, no. Yeah. So. <clears throat> 
Now, you, so you're saying it's it's capable of going down to four by the ratings, but it's it's nominal at eight. It nominal at so eight. It prefers sixteen because it's have, a commercial amp. Okay, so we have eight ohms here, eight ohms here, and eight ohms here. Okay? Yes, we do. All right, nominal, nominal, nominal. Well, so nominal, nominal, nominal. Not phenomenal. No, uh, no, no, I'm I mean, phenomenal. I mean, that's I mean, nominal. depending on what, uh, on what it is. So, anyways, but I'm modest. So. What we have here, of course, we've got our amplifier, and we're going to say the amplifier is it's uh, it's best at 16, but it's able to do eight, right? It's rated at eight. It's, it's rated it's, at eight. We're going to say the amplifier, the zones, mm -hmm. each zone is rated at um, 50 watts at eight ohms, and okay. we've got 12 zones on the amp, which is fairly common. Okay, so I made it easy on us because we have it, it's a let's say it's a two channel amplifier, mm -hmm. but channel one or channel left or channel one, however you want to look at it, is is three speakers. Yes, it right? is. Channel uh, channel two or channel right is three, three speakers. speakers. So it's going to be identical, just one for each channel or one set for each channel, right? Okay, so we have our positive side, we have our negative side. You know what? I can even go. You're going to do colors? I'm going to do colors. I'm going to do colors. See, we get, we listen, we get to do, we get to play with stuff today. We get to draw stuff on the whiteboard and we get to do math. Today's a good day. And you're with me. And I'm back. I and you're with me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our positive over here. We'll do blue as our negative. So I have to ask, were you Jones and Forrest last week? You know, I watched the episode live with what limited uh, cell Bandwidth signal I, I, had. I, I could. Uh, and, you know, it was, you, 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 with barring the problems you guys were having, in, you guys were still having a good time. And, and, and it was still enjoyable to watch. You were jealous, weren't you? I was a little jealous. Um, okay, so. We've got our negative here for the amplifier and our positive here for the amplifier as well. Now, so there's a couple things we need to look at. The first thing is, Brent, what do you do when you parallel speakers? Well, and more importantly, what does the math look like when you parallel speakers? Well, when you parallel speakers, you basically are dividing your impedance by the number of speakers. So if you have two 8-ohm speakers, right? you parallel them together, you divide that 8 by 2 gives you 4. Okay. Now, we have three 8-ohm speakers. Right. We are now dividing that eight by three. What does that give us? Okay, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do it the, the correct way. So we're gonna do, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not falling into that little trick. We're, we're gonna do it the correct way. So parallel is where we take the positive of the amplifier and touch it to the positive of the speaker. We Both take the sides. negative of the amplifier and touch it to the negative of the speaker for all the speakers involved in that parallel sequence. Yes. Right? So, and at this point, you're at four ohms. At four ohms. Because rule of thumb, if they're the same resistance or impedance, yes. if they're the same impedance, you take the two of those and you divide it by two. Because there's two speakers. It's two speakers. So we are now down to four ohm for those two speakers, mm -hmm. correct? Okay. Now, there's actually a math equation, and I want to play around with this math equation, because I, I, I like playing around with math. So the way that this works, make sure I get the right equation here for you. It looks like this. We have our total impedance, spelled out like so, our total. And the way that this looks is like this. You put a one over that equals one over impedance of speaker one plus one over impedance of speaker two and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, and then put a plus on that. So let's do this, right? Now, this is very simple, but why does it go from eight ohms to four ohms? That's the question, right? So the way that this works, we take our first in, our, our first setup. So it's it's uh, one over the total. We'll do it, we'll, we'll show it like this. One over T equals one over eight plus one over eight. Right? Okay. So then we, we move on from there and we say, okay, well, this is actually 2 over 8. Which is 1 quarter. Which is 1 quarter because we have to go ahead and get a, a, a common numerator on this setup, right? Okay. We, that, and that's what we want to oh, do. We want to work our way. Now. We're doing fractions, man. We're, we're going way back to algebra back in the days. You opened up a calculator for me. Thank you so much. So this actually is 1 fourth. And uh, it's important because we I, need to I make know sure. I you're from the Northeast, so I, I question your math skills. Uh, they're not good. Um, and, uh, and I'm sorry. I don't even remember the teacher that was supposed to teach me math. Whoever it was, I'm so sorry. It was, his family was named 
or no, sorry, one branch of his family broke off and developed a bread. And they were a bread. Uh, no, not that one. I forget what it was. Anyways, something up, uh, up in the northeast. Math. Probably why I don't know math because all I thought of was bread, bread the whole time that he was teaching math. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, that dough association. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. So, two point five four. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, what you have oh, here? That, we uh, need to go ahead and get yeah. The mic. Yeah. So you've got your ones here at the top. So then all we have to do at this point is we just. Go ahead and negate those out because it's the same on both sides. So we can get rid of that. So now our total impedance equals 4 ohm. Right? It's not ohms. It's not ohms. It's ohms. not. It, it, it's not our ohms equals 4. Nope, that's not it. That's not how you say it. Your impedance, your total impedance, the T stands for total in, in this equation. Our total impedance, we'll go with I for impedance. Actually, that's not even right. It's R. Is 4 ohm. So that's our resistance. And that's why this works okay, out. Okay, so give me all three speakers. Okay, so now the next part of that, of course, and that's where you were going next, is what about series? No, no, no. I want to know the math on three speakers. Oh, you want to see the math on three I speakers? I want to see the okay, math on yeah. three speakers because so, I know what the calculator tells me and my rule of thumb tells me. Let me see what your math tells okay. you. Okay. All right. So let's do the math for that. So we've got three speakers then, right? So we've got eight ohms. Mm -hmm. So we have one over our total resistance equals one over eight plus one over eight plus one over eight. Right? Yep. So we add those up, so that means that we're left with 3 over 8, mm -hmm. which equals 1 over T, right? We need this to equal this over here so that we can get the correct answer. So we need the 3 to equal the 1. So what I do in this case then is I multiply the 8 by 3 and I'm left with uh, 24. Okay. So 24, 3 times 3 is 9 over 24. Okay? Did I go the right direction with that? I'm kind of wondering where you're going with this, but, but let's go. Keep going. I'm, I'm looking forward to your math. So what the, the point is, is that we're trying to get this down to, oh, uh, no, this is what it is. So it's 3 divided by 8, because we need to get down to a 1, right? So now we do have to break out the calculator. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal your calculator. So 3 divided by 8 equals 0.375. So that is, so 3 over 8 is actually... 1 over 0.375, which you're not supposed to have a decimal in here, but that's why we're getting rid of the 1. So, our total impedance... Wait a minute. That doesn't sound right. No, hold on a second. I missed something. What did I miss? I'm getting 2.3, about 2.3 is my math. What did I miss here? Hold on I don't a second. Know. You put me on the spot. I... D Mike knows the answer. I can tell you Mike knows the answer. He, got, he had 2.54. See, I had 2.3 and change, so either way, because I did a rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So. I did the math wrong somewhere. I know I did, but I'll have to I, figure I, it out I, later. I'm not questioning Anyways, that. So, let's you go know ahead. My, you know who my money's on? <laughs> Mike. Mike. Yeah, Mike's right. Uh, okay, so. So, how would you do this otherwise? The correct way to do this over here. Put me on the spot like that to get me all, all, get me all screwed up. Uh, okay, so the correct way to do this, of course, is we don't want to do all of the speakers in parallel. We don't no, want to do. No, because we don't want to cook the amp. Exactly, and we don't want to do all of the speakers. But why does in it series. cook the amp? Uh, because it a low impedance means that the the speaker system is drawing more, more power, more current, more current, yes, more current, more current, more current than what the amplifier can actually handle. Cleanly. Cle yeah, exactly. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we stay within that range that it's safe in. So let's say it's 16 to 6. 8 to 6. 8 to 16. 8 to 16. Okay. So what we do then instead is we run two speakers in parallel, bring it to 4 ohm. No, I guess you, I guess you, you want to run two a two series. series and then add a parallel. Yes. So you got a good comment there. Okay. I didn't, did I miss it? Bimbo? No. <laughs> <laughs> the one of that, John. Jonathan Osborne, this is why a lot of in-wall speakers are nominal 6 ohm. No, they're 8 ohms. There used to be 6 ohm for residential speakers. All in-wall speakers are now nominal 8. Because amplifiers, in order to cut cost and power supplies, sure. want to see a higher impedance. You can tell it was right there. It's, it's our own John Osborne back there. Hey, hey. Hey, John. How are you doing? <laughs> I, I offered you the chance to come in here and do the math, and you said no. I, I start seeing them doing eight with three. Well, I missed it, right? And yeah. That, that's the reason why is because when you have six 
ohm speakers and you do three in parallel, it gives you a nice clean two ohm load. Got it. And then you can do runs of two and two and two. But and when you look at when you look at residential, mm -hmm. they're eight ohms because it allows them to do amplifiers less expensively. In the early in the seventies, right. four ohms was the standard because it was assumed you had two speakers. And yep. when you had A and B speaker selections, mm -hmm. typically A and B were series together, uh, which was a problem because if you had an AVR with dual outputs and you put a volume control on A, right. it would affect B. Right. Right, because they were right. series together. Right, yes. Okay. So what you would have to do is parallel them and then put individual volume controls on them. So, and then do the impedance matching on the volume control. So now our viewers get to see what actually happens behind the scenes. Uh, we, 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 yeah, this is th our this life. Is, this is it. This is what we're doing behind the scenes for all of this. Okay, so here's what we have going on. The correct way to, to do a system like this, where we wind up within the 16 to 8 ohm setup. We're going to series... 8 to 16. 8 to 16. I, I, I went the other direction. So we're going to series together two sets, mm -hmm. or two speakers, mm -hmm. and then we're going to parallel those to a single speaker itself. Right. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this here, we're going to go out of our positive on the amplifier, we're going to go to the positive over here, and then out of the negative of that speaker, we're going to run over to the positive here, and then we're going to run the negative out of this speaker over to the negative of the amplifier, right? Yes, which does what for you? This is going to turn the, the two 8 ohm speakers into a single 16 ohm speaker set. Correct. Yes. Now, when we add that other 8 ohm into it, what's it going to give us? That's going to bring us down to 10, 12. No. It's going to take you down to just under 10. Because the math is not exactly flat. Right. Apparently the speaker that you've been showing is 6 ohm. Is it? Really? No, it came out as, as 6 point... Uh, no, no, it came out as, as 7, 7 ohm. and change. Yeah, so yeah. It, it's an 8 ohm it's speaker. It's an 8 ohm speaker. Yeah. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta go beat Austin over the head. <laughs> Austin. Okay, I will happily the D sixty one. I will look happily up, uh, go beat Austin over the head. Look up the uh, yeah right. Uh, Austin, do me a favor. Look up the D sixty one from Origin Acoustics. That should be an eight ohm speaker. I don't believe it's a six. I don't ohm know speaker. if anybody doing a six ohm anymore. They used to be like Boston Acoustics and some of the the small bookshelves mm -hmm. were six ohms to get them a little bit more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, monitor audio and Origin Acoustics are nominal six ohm. Oh. There you go. So you, they're, they're trying to get you to use their amps then. Well, monitors not because they don't sell Either an amp. Either way. The, the point is, though, is that check out the, ohm, the, 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 the right. impedance of your speakers and put them because into the design. Because that is important if you're doing multiple drivers on the same run and setting up your right. impedance matching volume controls and our switches. Right. So then oh, now that we've done that. Ohms. Okay. Okay. Sure. It came out as 7 ohm on, on the impedance. Um, uh, on the meter. On the meter. Anyways. Okay. Going from the amplifier to the speakers here, for this one here, we're going to parallel this speaker to this speaker set. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, in when we and the reason I'm saying six or this speaker set is because we look at this as one speaker. Correct. In the in, in the equation. So, if we write out that equation again, and I'm not going to do the equation, I'm just going to show it here to what it looks like. <laughs> I'm not going to fall into that one again. So we go ahead and do this here. What you're going to wind up with is you got your total there, and then you go over here and you do the 1 over 16 for it's that raining. one speaker. It is raining. And then we do the 1 over 8. So that should wind up at, let's see, 2 over, so then this is going to be 3 over 16 at that, at that level there. Yeah, and then you invert that, so 16 divided by 3. That's what I did wrong. That, I didn't do I, the I inversion of it. That's oh, that's game. right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's where, now, now I can do the, where, where's the calculator? I'm going to do it now. Here. The big calculator. Yeah. So what this is going to do, this is going to give you uh, 3 over 16 because we're, we need to bring this up to 16, so that's 2, right? So 2 over 16 is what this is here. And then we do the, the addition for that, so that gives us a total of 3 over 16. And don't forget the inversion. Then we invert it. So we, we put the 16 on top, 3 on the bottom, so it's 16 divided by 3. Gives us... No. No. No, that is not correct. Because these are... That is 16 and 8. So it's 24 divided by 3. 24? No. 16 and 8. We are bad at math, is what this comes down it to. It should be... That should be somewhere around 10 ohms, based on my experience in the field. John? 
we got two speakers at eight series and a speaker at eight paralleled. So this should be one over 16. And then this should be two over 16. Yep. Right? Should be, then you add that together, it should be three over 16. You flip it, so How it's 16 divided by 16? three. Because you have to, they, they all have to come up to the same denominator to add them. in order to add them together. Okay. And then once you add them together, you're wound up with... So you're yeah. showing basically a six yeah. ohm load at that point. Yeah. Effectively that's, that's a six right. ohm load yeah. with, three, with three eight ohm yeah, speakers. Yeah, that is right, right? That, that is right. That's right. Okay. Now, and this is why it's so much fun working here. <laughs> We're bad at math. I thought I had all of this on lock. I, th I thought I had all of it ready no, to go. No, no, what you had was the history on lock. I did have the history on lock. That's exactly what I had. So maybe and, maybe the, the, the equation I looked up was, was the bad equation. And, you know, and I did ask John beforehand, hey, John, you want to join us in this? Because <laughs> John, John spent a long time in 12 volt. Yes, yes, he did. And I am a long way from. So now that I put my foot in my mouth and we'll, multiple we'll, we'll, times. We're not done because I'm going to ask John the next question. John! <laughs> Come on in. All right. Come on in. On the Everybody, this is John. He runs our heist. You've, you've seen him here on the nice LED video. stuff. Um, so if we've got two in speakers in series, what is happening to the signal going into those speakers? So you have the signal going into both signals. Yes, we've got two in speakers in series. Yep. What is happening to the signal going into those two drivers? They're the getting... phasing. 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 And this is why seriesing is a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll end up with a, uh, a time alignment. Yeah, absolutely. It's 40 degrees out of phase yeah. each time you add another series driver. And that's not 40%. Mm -mm. It's 40 out of 360. Exactly. So if you were to look at... Did you give me an overhead? Yeah. Wow. Go back to overhead. Okay, there we'll you. do it here. So, 0 and 360 is the same point. Exactly. 180, 90. So we're at about 115 mm -hmm. in the afternoon. But each time you add a driver, you add another 40%. 40 degrees. 40, excuse me, 40 degrees ah. out of phase. And eventually that starts to muddy up your sound. Yeah, you can share that with the offset sine wave and you'll start having cancellation. Right, which particularly on the mids and bottom ends can absolutely affect the clarity and detail of your sound, which is honestly why you don't want a series of driver if you don't have to. What you really want to do is put the proper amplifiers in so you don't have to do that. Exactly. I have done it in car audio, series parallel systems to, to meet a minimum requirement. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of times we have... You have to make concessions. I was going to say, we, we got some other devices that you add in to accommodate. Do the time correction? Exactly. Ah. To make up for it. They didn't have those in the dinosaur days, John. No. <laughs> I'm surprised they even had car audio back then. Remember, some of us are not as young as others. And that original Motorola radio that cost more than the car that it was in? Uh, first off, I sold Motorola car audio. And I sold RCA car audio. So... What's next on the uh, sheet there, Adam? I have no idea because you know what I'm doing? I'm going back and looking that, at that stupid equation and trying to find <laughs> out what I did wrong. Okay, well, I got Adam's cheat sheet here. So, uh, yeah, Actually, the next part is uh, it was going to be part of this episode, but that we're going to do a different episode. And, in fact, I'm now in a tizzy. Bit, uh, I'm now in a tizzy, and I'm going to have to redo this episode because I'm not going to let this go. I'm going to figure out what, what I did wrong with the math. You know what I'm probably going to do? I'm probably going to call Mr. Noonan. <laughs> And get a tutorial? And get a tutorial. A one on one training session. <laughs> Anyways. You know what the really sad part is? Huh. I did calc, trig, physics, right. algebra one and two, right. funk geometry. Right. And what do we use the most of? Geometry. Yeah. yeah. For what we do for a living, yeah. we wind up using more geometry than, than anything any else. other math. That's right. Yeah. Which is sad because it was, to me, it was, a, <laughs> it was grammar for numbers. Uh, that's, well, that's basically what it and is. And I right? flunked grammar too. Yeah. Oh, oh, well, we you, went to you sleep do. on the. Went to sleep on what? On the panel. Oh, on the panel. However, I have become a grammar Nazi for my writings, and which is weird. Uh, yeah. Because of what we do. You with the manuals. Mm-hmm. So we have to be careful of this stuff, and it's things that I hated. And I hated grammar and and geometry. Actually, I can give you an overhead real quick. I can put the formula up on here. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I got it. 
Okay. So Everybody, this is John again. So, if we're going to do series speakers. Use a different color. That black's dying. And we're going to give... We're now blue. using the overhead mic. So when we do series, you take the nominal impedance of the speaker and your total uh, resistance value is going to be T is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And nauseum. So you essentially you take your 8 ohm speaker plus your 4 ohm speaker plus your 62 ohm speaker plus 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 and you just add them up simple math and get your result. So that's how you do a series connection. All good? Yeah. Here, you need to claim them. There we go. <laughs> now parallels where you couple things so like Adam was talking about you have to have a common denominator so you have to work out multiply by usually the easiest way is multiplying by each other so if you have a 4 and an 8 multiply the one side by 8 and then multiply the other side by 4 and that gives you the common base of 32 like boom boom base yep but the uh, the parallel circuit to find your total resistance is equal to bracket 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 to the negative 1. So what you'll do is you'll work this out so you have a sum of say 6 over 12 to the negative 1 and then what this negative 1 does it tells you to invert your top your numerator and your, your denominator here so you'll end up with 12 over 6 and okay we got room and that would give you a 2 ohm load which would fry your residential amplifier. Oh yeah, but sounds great in the car. <laughs> <laughs> and, and residentially for about three seconds. Yes. And it'll get hot. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, remember, on our, in our world, eight ohms is the minimum target goal. There are certainly ampli you know, we know speakers that are six ohms, mm -hmm. but they are meant with a speaker per channel per zone, not multiples. Yeah, I've seen them where they say rate it 16 to 6, 16 to 4. You get down there that 6 and 4 and those, they get toasty. They're, yep, it's they do. not intentional. What does the pair sound say? That's what I'm looking for. And part of that is that we're talking about nominal impedance. When right, the speaker moves, the impedance changes. And lower frequencies will drop it. And so what you thought you had was a 6 ohm load hooked up to it is really driving one or two ohms at certain times mm -hmm. and really stressing your amplifier. Um, back in back when four ohms was the standard for most residential speakers, mm -hmm. you would see them drop down below one ohm. And the reason they raise is a lot of AVRs as we move from the old tube days yep. into MOSFETs and then chipsets could not deal with that. <laughs> and it would just cook them and they would oh, get yeah. super hot and just cook. Now there's been a number of things through the years to try to resolve that. Um, for example, Infinity did what they called a Watkins woofer configuration. It was actually two voice coils, one on top of the other. The second voice coil would kick in when the impedance dropped to raise it up. That's, that's pretty cool. Uh, Kenwood did what they called Sigma Drive. Mm -hmm. We had a second set of leads from the amplifier going to the speaker to monitor the impedance at the speaker to adjust the amplifier for the load to control the current. So the the parasound over here, yes. Uh, the the special one that that, that we showed. Uh, yeah, the A fifty one. Yeah, the one that I'm not going to pick up right now because it weighs, you know, uh, an eighty elephant. plus pounds. Um, at eight ohm, it's two hundred fifty watts. Yes. At, uh, at four, four ohms, ohm, it's four hundred watts. watts. Yes. So, however, what's the current rating? And that's the kicker. Yeah. Um, 
And see, typically, the, the assumption is if you cut the impedance in half, you double the wattage. Mm -hmm. That is not true. Mm -hmm. Because it comes down to how much current and everything else that's involved in the amplifier. Oh, and that's where the triangle comes in for your... Right. For your, so what's uh, the current on that? 60 uh, amps, 60 I think. 60 amps, yep. 60 amps per channel. Yeah. So plenty enough power per channel. It's a, it's a fantastic amplifier. Now, I have seen a lot of the amplifiers out there run at either the 8 ohm or the 4 ohm uh, in the home uh, mm -hmm. style setups because that's, you know... Uh, it's what we do. There. Um, you're right about the 16 being just a little bit of a safer, going higher in impedance. It drops the perceived volume down 3 dB. Yeah, but it's mm -hmm. easier for the amplifier because it's not there's not it's as not much stressed. power, uh, your right. current going through it at, at those higher impedances. It also gives you better uh, volume control over the system. Right. Yeah, exactly. Because it, it's it's now you're giving uh, a broader range control right. over over that that amount for that. So, where we what we might need to do is we might need to get into. Maybe in the next episode, when I'm able to get in here and do the... Uh, well, thank you, John, for, for doing the math. Well, right here. I, not, not for nothing, why don't you have John come back next week, <laughs> get deeper, in, and hold off on the HDMI math for me to return so I feel like I have a contribution to sure. make. Sure, I like that. I like that idea. We'll do that. So, if, if John, if you're up for that, we you'll come it. back for another episode, and, and we'll do some more math and find out about the amplifiers and how they work. Yeah, I think we, we can definitely do that. Do that. And by the way, this also affects lighting. Yes. <laughs> And that's something that you should guys should discuss again a little bit next week because this same in, this same impedance concerns yeah will absolutely affect LED lighting. Well, it affects LED lighting, uh, in, in, incandescent lighting. Um, well, incandescent really doesn't care. No, no. Yes, because it's voltage driven instead right. of current driven. Incandescence is? Yes. Yes. Am I getting my my decence? mixed up? Yes, <laughs> which is why when you look at a, uh, like a an older Vantage system, they ran. Um, 90 volts in the background. Mm -hmm. It's just a carrier. Right. So, which which uh, Rob, as we uh, know. Rob learned that one, and you, you and Rob learned that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, experts are saying that, that they were wrong. It, uh, it's 2.67 um, I for the other one, for, for the other math that, that he was doing. And then uh, Michael Heist is saying, just remember, just like a Christmas tree lights went on a speaker in a series array fails, the whole line goes down. Uh, right, you guys parallel. really do need to redo this. Yes, Michael, we do. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, you also need to include watts plus volts times amp side of things for figuring power consumption. There's a reason why it's called amplifiers, not wattifiers. <laughs> <laughs> Current, baby. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, we, we I, I like that one, a wattifier. Uh, wattifier. Never, I have never it's, heard it's that an statement. Amplifier, not a wattifier. Um, okay, so now that I, now that, listen. It, it was time for this because you and uh, you and the rest of the team had a, a great time the last two weeks, and I'm back, so I need to put my foot in my mouth at least you know once. So I think next week, yeah. Welcome to Disaster Central. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, now your disaster was <laughs> your disaster was just was just technical difficulties. Mine is that I can't do math. Is, is what that comes down to, and I was I, I think I looked down a, uh, I looked up a bad equation is really what I sure thinking. we'll go with that we're gonna go with that <laughs> yeah I, I didn't it was really it's still mine. yeah it, it's still my fault because I, I found the bad equation maybe we um, uh, get like the CFO in here next time for the next oh that's an idea right <laughs> let him do the, <laughs> see, we'll, we'll give him the equation math. right and let him do the math on it and then that way you know we know it's correct okay wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute now this is very important if we're gonna have the CFO in we have to ever have everything in perfect oh yes alignment. <laughs> All right, uh, John. Thank you so much for rescuing the, yeah, the day today. I really appreciate that. I, I know I'm off camera over here. Um, I'll step out. Nice uh, to see you guys. <laughs> we'll see you, see you again week. next week, John. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna and thank you. Back over here to our microphone. So now we we sound a little bit better there. Um, yeah. So I I have put my foot <laughs> firmly in my mouth with, with today's episode. So uh, I, I think I've, as I I've you know it. done that one pretty well. But you know, here's the thing. I we am, learn. We, we learn and we move on and we're good with that. And what so, we learn, we share. Next week, come back where we will uh, use Holmes John's... Part two. Holmes part two. We'll use John's brain to do this correctly. I will do more research and better prepare myself for that one as well. I'm going to reach out to a couple of people that are out in the community. You're going to pick up the law book? And, uh, and what am I doing? Pick up a law book. A law book? For, uh, Ohm's, for law? Yeah, Ohm's Law? Yeah, exactly. Well, you might as well be, right? Stop taking equations from Wikipedia and I think Nick's on to something. Yeah. Stop taking equations from Wikipedia. Listen, you go uh, if you download my my show notes, you'll see that there is no Wikipedia article referenced on my show notes. I'm double checking myself. There are no Wikipedia. By the way, <laughs> did, wasn't it you that said it's not Ohms, it's Ohm? Uh, here's the thing. No, back up, back up. Okay, back up. Because I'm looking at the bottom I, of this. I understand. I understand. 
So it's referencing the it's, man's. It's his ownership of the law. Okay, so Correct. it is Ohm's yeah, law, he, he, but it is Ohm's. Ohm. Yeah, it's it's Ohm. When you call it out in a specific like amount, it's Ohm. I thought we were meditating. Ohm. No, but Brent, do you know where <laughs> this stuff I learned? I learned all the trivia for all this stuff. I didn't learn all the other crap. Um, so, Brent. Uh, <sighs> yes, Adam. Why is the omega symbol used for Ohms? For Ohms. For Ohm, mm -hmm. I do not know why the Omega symbol was selected for Ohm's law. Adam, why was <laughs> the Omega symbol selected for Ohm's apostrophe law? For no other reason than the fact that Ohm is in Omega. That's the only reason that it was picked. You and your useless trivia are quite it entertaining. Is I, look, at least I've got something, yeah. right? At least I have some kind of trivia. At, at least that's what Wikipedia said. Yeah. That, that, that's, <laughs> yes. No, no, no. no. That, that one didn't, actually, that one are came from... Are you sure from, Wikipedia didn't say that? Uh, I think that one came from the FizzLink uh, link on that one. You'll have to go check it out. Uh, one more piece of trivia. Ready? Sure. What was the symbol used for Ohm's Law before World War II? Okay, I'm old. Okay. But I'm not that okay. old. Okay. Okay. What was the symbol used for Ohm's law so, prior to World War II? After World War II, we used this symbol. The Omega. Right? Yes. Before World War II, they used this symbol. Which that one's, it, it's I'm not n normally drawing that one. Okay, I can see why they changed that. Right? So this symbol here is a lowercase Omega. It's still Omega. I did not know there was it's a lowercase Omega. So before World War II, World War, War II, II, WW2. If you had a resistance of like say 56 ohm, it mm -hmm. would be 56 ohm. It was a raised uh, uh, okay, lowercase Omega. Okay, I can Omega. honestly see why they did away with yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they got rid of that, and then now of course after that, we Dude, have the upper Somebody must have got woke. Sure. And changed we'll that one out. We'll, we'll go with something like that. Okay, well. That's pretty much all that I had with that, except for how to use, do troubleshooting. But honestly, I think we should do that for the next episode. Because at this point, I, I need to learn the, the equation before I, I know how to better uh, well, do troubleshooting off, with and it. And I do appreciate you yeah. having the problems this week instead of me. I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And thank you, John. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, so next everyone... week will be next week will be a lot more educational. <laughs> Possibly not as entertaining, but yep. a lot more educational. Yep. Um, hopefully not as many mistakes. I will be uh, in New York with Austin. Yes, you will. Traveling. Yep. Um, hi to everybody up there. We're going to Syracuse and um, I don't know where else. Yeah. If you still trust us, you can call us, of course, on our tech support line at 386-492-8584. Don't ask for math. <laughs> just, just don't ask us questions about Ohm's Law. Today. Uh, well, today, anyways. Ask us next week where, where we have all of our but stuff together. But we're with the HDMI stuff. Now, I will say, listen, this is something that, it, no, not, not to flip this too far in the other direction, but this is why um, when you call up our tech support with problems that maybe we don't have the answer to, um, this is why we do so well in this area, which... Coming from outside and now working here, uh, and, you know, I've been here almost three years now, but um, that's one thing that I can, I can say is great about being here is the fact that when something like this comes in that I have no idea, I have so many extremely smart people all around me and to ask questions. We don't sit at our desk just answering the phone. We're in each other's offices. Yeah. It's like, hey, I got this call. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah. And after the call, we sit down and talk about these things. Yeah, exactly. What you guys call us with, mm -hmm. whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, or sometimes it's funny, mm -hmm. we talk about because every one of these is a learning experience for all of us. Today was definitely a learning experience for me. That's for darn sure. Oh, it was, uh, a, it was, was certainly uh, an entertaining <laughs> one for me. I was say for you, it was definitely an entertaining experience. So... With that said, uh, and, and I will say the same thing is true for our 12 volt tech support guys. Um, oh no, they're a lot smarter than we are. They are definitely a lot smarter than we are. I, I will give it to them. They are brilliant guys. Um, and so, if you need any help with anything else, of course, feel free to give us a call. Four nine two, sorry, three eight six four nine two eight five eight four is our tech support line. You can call us direct. Three eight six two zero two six one three two is me. Six one three seven is, is me. Uh, you can, of course, email us as well, adam.rogers at metroav.com or brent.mccall at metroav.com. Uh, and what we'll do next week is we'll do this episode basically again. Uh, but correctly. With, but correctly with the correct information with I'm going to get with John and, and all that, and it'll be good to go. Um, we're going to hit this button here because this is going to bring up the next uh, P. 
piece of that. Um, how do we troubleshoot? Well, we do the next episode. That's where we're going to learn how to troubleshoot, right? So, again, everybody, thank you so much for checking out today's episode. Uh, if you have more questions or if you have good information that would help me learn better about how to do or if you just want to call the equations and laugh at on us. this, or that too, feel free to reach out to us. Like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification to let you know whenever we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at, at 3, 3 p.m. p.m. Unless this is our last episode. Uh, this could very well be our last. Uh, listen, it's three strikes, we're out, right? We had the first one go bad, the second one go bad, and now we're on our third one. So we'll see how this one goes. This right? could be the end of it. <laughs> uh, also, check us out on Fridays where we will talk about our specific products. Uh, that go along with whatever and we, we talk about on Wednesday. we have some very specific products because yeah. we have an impedance matching volume control and speaker selectors and four and six bangers yep. that Adam, Adam will be doing this Friday. Which I will have more, uh, more, more born? information, better information. Born? Born information. I will have better information for you by then. Jason so I can born? answer better questions. So come back on Friday where we'll talk about uh, one of those things, either the speaker selector or the volume control. Uh, and then come back next Wednesday where when we, we talk will do about this the other one. all over again and do it the right way. So, I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Reboot early. Reboot often. Don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. And call tech support. Call Have tech a great support. week. We'll see, see you all next Friday. time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>